Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I've got this Ford Duratec 2.0 HE and we're going to be going over the engine management electrical and electronic component locations. Now, for obvious reasons, I can only give you the locations of the electrical components that are actually on the engine itself. And there may be a few that are missing, but I'll mention those. But because I don't have the whole car here, we're just gonna go over what's on the actual engine itself. Now, because I'm gonna be going over a lot of locations and you may be only searching for one or two things, I'm gonna put a list up right here of the different components that I'm gonna locate and I'm gonna give you the time that you can skip to to see where these things are located at. And just for clarification, this 2.0 came out of a 2014 Ford Focus equipped with a DPS6 transmission. This video is actually a continuation of my series on the 2012 to 2018 Ford Focus equipped with a DPS6 transmission. So some of these things may vary from model to model, depends on what car you're looking at here. So this may vary just a little bit. You always wanna confirm the actual locations of these components, first by looking at it and also verifying it in a reputable repair manual. And I say that of course, because this 2.0 was not only used on the 2012 to 2018 Ford Focus, it was used on other vehicles as well. So some things may vary. Okay, moving right along. Now we're looking at this engine as it would be installed in the actual vehicle. This would be the front of the vehicle right here. There would actually be a radiator about right here. Uh, there would be an engine mount on that side. That would be the right side of the vehicle as you're sitting inside the vehicle. This would be the left side of the vehicle as you're sitting inside the vehicle, but we're looking head on at it. So this right here, this is called your electronic throttle body. And of course it bolts right up to the intake manifold and that's where that lives. And of course guys, I am missing the air inlet and the air filter housing of course. The air snorkel or air inlet that comes off of the throttle body going to the air filter would have your mass airflow sensor inside there. So that's where that lives. Now just beneath the throttle body, towards the oil filter, you'll notice that you have this little switch right here. That's your oil pressure switch. That's where that lives. And just above it, up underneath the intake manifold let's see if we can get up in there that right there is knock sensor number one that's just behind the alternator up underneath the intake manifold and then that right there that is knock sensor number two just beneath the intake manifold now as you back away from that area there uh, this here is the electrical connector for knock sensor number one, and this is the electrical connector for knock sensor number two, and that's just underneath the intake manifold. All right, moving upward and above the uh, alternator there, just behind your tensioner pulley, you'll notice that you have your fuel rail. That's your high pressure fuel rail right there. That right there is your fuel rail pressure sensor. And then you'll notice underneath the fuel rail, you'll have four connectors as you look down that way, up underneath the intake manifold. And those four connectors, I know you can't see it that well, go to each of your four fuel injectors. You'd have fuel injector number one right here. Then the next one would be number two, three, and then four, just like that. Okay, and working our way up to the top of the engine here, you'll see that you have these two devices right here. These are your variable cam timing solenoids. This would be variable cam timing solenoid number one. And this would be number two. This is also known as the intake variable cam timing solenoid. And this is also known as the exhaust variable cam timing solenoid. And on back from that, you have ignition coil number one. Then you have ignition coil number two, number three, and number four. And then right here, this would be your cylinder head temperature sensor. You have to pull up on that little rubber boot to access that. There's a connector inside there and you can get to your cylinder head temperature sensor that way. Now moving towards the rear of the valve cover, you have your camshaft position sensor. And there's actually two on this. There's an intake camshaft position sensor and an exhaust camshaft position sensor. You can see that this sensor is missing here. This is also known as camshaft position sensor bank one sensor one. And this is also known as camshaft position sensor bank one sensor two. Bank one sensor one is your intake camshaft position sensor for obvious reasons. Of course, you got two camshafts on this engine here, one on the front here and then one on the back. 
The one on the front is real close to the intake manifold, so that would be your intake camshaft. And then the one on the back, of course, is your exhaust camshaft because the exhaust comes out the back there. So bank one, sensor one is your intake. Bank one, sensor two is your exhaust camshaft position sensor. Now moving towards the side of the engine or the back of the engine, just to the rear of the throttle body there, you have what's called the EVAP canister purge valve or the vapor management valve right there. And then you have your fuel injection pump right here. That's your high, high pressure fuel injection pump. And then down here, actually it's up underneath there that is your engine coolant temperature sensor right there and then there would also be a device right here that is not present your fuel pressure sensor or your fuel line pressure sensor and that is not present on the engine of course i don't have the exhaust manifold on here or the catalytic converter but usually the the first oxygen sensor which is the universal oxygen sensor uh would be just before the catalytic converter about right here and then on further down would be the o2 sensor that's after the catalytic converter the one that's before is bank one sensor one the one that's after the catalytic converter is bank one sensor two then moving on towards the front of the engine here up underneath here right where the crank pulley is this is your crankshaft position sensor and then you have this other wiring here that goes to your AC compressor right there. Now it's probably easiest to get to the crankshaft position sensor through the passenger side wheel well. Once you remove the wheel and the fender apron, it's pretty well wide open. Well folks, that is it. Of course, that's not all of the engine management components that you need to know about. Uh, that's just what's on this particular engine right here that I have outside the vehicle. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Maybe I can help you further if you need to know something else. As for what's on this engine here, those are the engine management components, electrical components that I was able to go over for you that I had present on this engine here. Folks, sincerely hope that this helped you. As always, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. Uh, I may need to clarify some things. That's where I do that. And please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye.